Hey folks, what's up? Welcome to my channel. We have a very odd combination of foods here right now, um, and that's because we're gonna do a little bit of food prepping. Uh, also, we're gonna make a Oreo Rice Krispie treat. That'll be a new one for us. Um, but I've just got like, a variety of things that we either need to prep and get put away, or some things I'd like to just get used up. So, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so one of the things that I like to keep on hand is fresh fruit. However, we get paid bi-weekly, so we do our grocery shopping bi-weekly. Fresh fruit, other than apples, don't typically last that long in this house. They either get completely ate up or they start to go bad. So one of the things that we find that works well for us is that on the off week, when we don't get paid, um, is one way that we can keep some, some fruit on hand for the kids um, is just to put some canned fruit in a bowl and then pop it into the refrigerator so it's nice and cold it tastes better than being room temperature and just super easy to get it out for the kids this is a rather large container i guess i should have got a smaller one but that'll work for my two cans of pears before we want to get any further i want to say hi and welcome to my channel if you are new my name is kristen i am a lifestyle slash mommy vlogger i've got two little boys a four year old and a one and a half year old and Welcome to my channel. If you've been here for a long time or a little bit of time or what have you, I want to say thank you for hanging out with me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go get these washed out for the recycling and we'll move on to the next thing that I need to uh, prepare or take care of. So I don't know about you guys, but I use baby wipes for everything, especially when it's something super, especially when it's something super little to clean up. Like I spilled a little bit of pear juice. So I'm just going to use some baby wipes to clean this up really quickly. So the next thing here, last time I was at the store, uh, I had to get two pounds or eight cups of cheese. It was either this or the one pound packages. Normally I get the four cups. Um, so it's like half of this. Um, I don't mind having the larger ones on hand because we do go through a lot of shredded cheese, but we're not going to make it through 16 cups of shredded cheese before these start to go back. But you can freeze these. Um, we do like to have a little bit of variety on hand. So I'm going to take um, about two cups of this and put it in my fridge and two cups for my freezer. Same with this guy. And we're just going to do that by putting them into some Ziploc baggies. So I'm just going to measure these out in a little two cup. My pirate's wool for two cups. We can do a heaping two cups. Doesn't really matter that much. I just need to have half of this in the freezer. Let's see if we can get, guys, I'm tired. <laughs> I was thinking this was a four cup bag. It's an eight cup bag. So we're going to see if we can get four cups in here. So there was two cups. Let's see if we can get another two in there. So, and realistically buying the larger bags is probably cheaper. It normally is more economical to buy in bulk. Uh, but the downside to that is that if you buy things in bulk and can't use them, um, and then that becomes wasteful. You wasted your money and you wasted the product. So that's why I don't normally buy them this large because that's just more than my family can get through. And then at some point that becomes wasteful. Um, but it is freezable. So now I've got four pounds of cheese right here. So we can pop that into my freezer. I push all the air out of it. And I can put this guy in my refrigerator. So this might be something that we decide to do a little more often because, like I said, it is a little more economical because we do go through so much cheese. So, that guy will go right in my cheese drawer, right in my freezer. And then we'll just repeat that with this guy real quick. Okay, now it's time to chop my lettuce. You can buy pre-chopped lettuce in the store, but I've always personally found that it goes bad more quickly and you don't get nearly as much lettuce for your money versus just buying it uncut so I'm gonna wash this off really quickly and then we'll get to chopping so this is romaine lettuce uh, it was a three pack we already ate one of the, the heads already so I'm not gonna have as much as I would a lot of times I will get a three pack of romaine lettuce and a head of iceberg to kind of mix together 
and just chop it all up and put it in a baggie. So I'm not gonna be able to fill up this whole thing, um, but I do put them in storage storage baggies just so I can get the air out and help keep them fresh a little bit longer. So when it comes to chopping up romaine lettuce or any kind of lettuce, a knife with serrated edges works beautifully, something you might consider a bit of like a, a bread knife almost. It's gonna do a really good job of not like shredding your leaves really like it's gonna chop them nicely without tearing them up hopefully that makes sense hold them as a bunch slice them all together and fun fact if you didn't know when I was 16, 16 through about 20 I worked at a restaurant and one of my positions if you will was salad bar attendant so I spent a lot of time chopping fruits and vegetables I'm, I'm quite experienced. <laughs> so as you get towards the bottom, things start getting a little more loose leaf, if that makes sense. There's just less stock to it. So you want to keep pinching things closer together so that you have a better hold on it as you chop it. And that's just as you go through your first rough through. Really none of this matters all that much. Because you're just chopping it all up roughly anyways. So and when I do this, I keep my hands on either side of the blade. But as you can see, hopefully, I mean, you see them that way, not really. <laughs> Try to give you a good, a good view. So I have my blade up and down like this, and I have everything pressed out to the sides of it. You don't want to tuck anything down around your blade or you will risk you will risk cutting yourself. So hands about flat like such on top of your veg as you go. Keep an eye on your fingers. Know where they're at. Know where your blade's at. Are you loud? How are you doing? <laughs> I've got a helper. Are you cutting lettuce? I am cutting lettuce. Lettuce are yummy. I don't you, want to put it in the bag. You want to eat some lettuce? No. You want to help me put it in the bag? Yes. And there's lots of lettuce in the bag. Okay, there we go. We've got lots of lettuce in the bag. So we just want to make sure we get all the air out and it's good to go into our veggie drawer. This is one easy way to save money because you're going to get more bang for your buck cutting your lettuce yourself. And it normally keeps longer. Okay! Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to prep our ground hamburger for the freezer. So this is five pounds of ground beef. So I'm going to take out five. Hi, vlog. Hi, vlog. I'm going to take out five Ziploc baggies. So we like to use this kind of ground hamburger uh, a lot of times for any time you're going to use ground meat. Um, I've never, I don't know that we've ever really used it much for actually doing like cheeseburgers, but you know, if you're doing like a hamburger helper or anything like that, bah! this tends to work pretty well. If you don't know quite how to get this meat out of the uh, packaging, so I know it can be a little daunting the first time, you're like, how do I get this out? Um, there is a seam that runs right along the side of the package. I just like to cut right along the seam here, and then you can just pull it open pretty easily. Is big. Hey blog, that's big. Hey blog, can I move suits? Hey blog, that's big. You're in the middle. Mommy needs to be in the middle. I want to be in the middle. <laughs> okay, so this is a five-pound log of ground beef. So I should be able to get five bags of these filled and it should be about a pound a piece. Now, if you have a kitchen scale, this could really come in handy and you could just measure it out and know exactly how much you're getting. I don't own a kitchen scale, so I just kind of eyeball it. So what I like to do is make small little grooves right about, where I, right about where I feel like a one pound would be. I do it all the way down until I've got roughly five pounds of meat measured out. And then if I've messed anything up or anything looks too big, I can kind of redo it. So that gives me one, two, three, four, five. These two look a little too small, so I'm gonna readjust it here. For this one, for this one. 
because I feel like this guy was just a little hefty. Okay, so it might be a little bit confusing for somebody else to look at and understand my marks, but I know what they are. And of course, if going back through it like that is too much for you, you can always rotate your log over and start over to see if you can get your correct um, five pounds before you cut it. So you should end up with one, two, three, four lines to get you one, two, three, four, five pounds of ground beef. And of course, it's kind of a rough estimate. Sometimes I'm a little off. It's not a big deal. And then we just kind of slice them all up. Okay, so that gives me roughly five pounds of ground beef and then I can pack them into my freezer bag. So if you need to mark and date them, now would be the time while your bag is flat. Um, mine are from the Great Value brand and they've got a little spot here for Sharpie marker. It says date contents. Uh, I, I'm gonna know what it is and I feel like we'll use it up before I need to worry about the date on it. So I'm personally not too concerned. So all we do is get it on in here and then you want to work it out so that it's flat and your goal here is to make sure that you push out as much air as you possibly can. This is going to help protect your meat and keep it from getting frostbite. Okay, I now have five pounds of ground beef ready for my freezer. So let's go ahead and take a minute and sanitize my tabletop. After using something, after prepping some kind of a meat product, I always like to go through with a more heavy duty cleaner just to make sure that we kill any germs and that we don't have any cross contamination. So I've got a Lysol all purpose cleaner in my little spray bottle there. If you guys are having a hard time finding Lysol at all or like in a spray bottle, you can you can currently find jugs of Lysol like this pretty easily. This one is the kills 99.9% of germs, viruses, and bacteria from Lysol. It is their multi-purpose surface cleaner or multi-surface cleaner. And I think this was under $5. It does not come with its own spray nozzle, but you can easily pop over to like where they have the mops and buckets and get a spray bottle. So if you're not able to find one in a spray bottle or Lysol like aerosol can, this stuff will do exactly the same thing. Not, kills 99.9% .9 of germs from Lysol brand. You just gotta get a bottle to put it in. But look at how much you're getting. So that's what we've been doing this whole 2020 year of coronavirus is when we need our Lysol, we're just doing it in our own spray bottle. Super easy. And this one from Great Value Brand has a little label spot on it where I was able to write Lysol, so I know what's in here. And I've been able to find like three of these jugs already, so these, at least in my area, seem to be pretty easy to get a hold of. Okay, so moving on, we are going to make up some Oreo Rice Krispie Treats. I have personally never made Rice Krispie Treats before, ever. Anytime we have fresh Rice Krispie Treats, which is what I prefer, I don't like store-bought like at all. My husband makes them. So this is gonna be an adventure for me here in the kitchen, making Rice Krispie Treats, but I've seen a recipe for Oreo Rice Krispie Treats, and we just happen to have a couple of package of snack size Oreos on hand. Now all the recipes I'm finding call for 20 full size Oreos smashed up. So I don't know exactly what that would make, but I've got the minis, and I assume they're gonna work exactly the same. So let's try this out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some of these into my food processor. I'm gonna guess I probably need about half a cup of cookies. So that sounds good to me. We'll start with that. So I'm gonna go grind up these cookies and I'll be back with you when I've got half a cup ready to go. Okay, the recipe also says to take a nine by eight uh, pan. Um, I have a nine by 13, so that's what I'm using, but you're supposed to grease it. So you can either use um, non-stick cooking spray or just butter. And I think with dessert dishes, using actual butter always tastes better. So just using some paper towel, I scoop a little out on my paper towel, <laughs> and then we're just gonna grease it real nice. 
And if you don't have any paper towel, but you still want to use the butter, you could always portion out a little bit of butter, probably about two tablespoons, and that's being generous into a separate bowl. And then just use your actual fingers to grease the pan, like pick the tablespoons of butter up and grease it that way. I only mention it because I know paper towels can be really hard to come by right now. So just putting that out there in case you don't have any paper towels. And of course your hands would be greasy after that, but hands are made for washing. So on low heat in a nice size pot, you're supposed to add four tablespoons of butter. And I just always use what I have on hand. This is country crock, right? I know when you bake stuff, people say you got to use the unsalted butter sticks. I've never bought special butter for baking. I've always just used what I've had on hand and I've never had a problem from it. So that's three. And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not properly measuring it because butter makes everything better. <laughs> Nobody hates extra butter. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and spray my wooden spoon with some non-stick spray. The butter is starting to talk to me. Do you hear it? Okay, so here I'm gonna go ahead and toss in my marshmallows. Now it says to do um, 18 ounces. I've got half a bag that was 16, and then I've got like two half bags of large marshmallows. So, and since it doesn't really say how many cups, it just tells me 18 ounces. I'm gonna throw all this in and then some jumbos. He has marshmallows, never hurt anybody's feelings either. Okay, roughly half a bag of the jumbos and hopefully that is enough. If it's not enough, I've got this one off to the side here. To this, I'm also gonna splat a, I'm also going to add a splash of vanilla. Oh, that's making it sizzle. Is that good? I don't know, do I need to turn on my heat? Somebody tell me what I'm supposed to be doing because I've never done this before. Let me just bring it all. Just, you just wanna make everything melty. And then we're gonna add in our cereal and our Oreo cookies. At this point, you can see that all my minis have melted and my jumbos have not. So if you're gonna do this with all jumbos, I would suggest taking some scissors and just roughly chopping them up to make sure they start melting. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. <laughs> Learn from my mistake <laughs> and make sure they're cut before you put them in your pot. Otherwise they just, they take longer to melt and I'm afraid I'm gonna start burning everything else that's already melted up in here. So hopefully that helps make, make things melt a little more quickly. So I did go ahead and add in some extra jumbo marshmallows and I chopped them up before I added them in, but I feel like we're at the point where we need to start adding in our cookies and our cereal. So it calls for four cups of Rice Krispie Treat cereal. And before adding in my cereal, I did take it off the heat. So there's my cereal. Go ahead and start mixing this all in. Hopefully this turns out okay and I didn't add too much butter. I don't know. I feel like my mix might be a little too soupy. Hope not though. I might just need to add extra cereal to it. And then I'm gonna add my cookies. So I ended up with more of a full cup than half a cup with what I showed you guys that I put in my uh, blender but that's okay extra cookies never hurt anybody's feelings either it looks good but it looks a little soupy almost i think i don't know i hope i have enough marshmallows in there i'm gonna just add a little extra cereal to absorb some of that extra moisture and hope that i'm not ruining things Okay, let's go ahead and put our Rice Krispie Treat mixture into our pan. I decided to switch it out for an eight by eight. I believe that's what this is. Well, I can't read it now that the butter's on it, but I'm pretty sure it's an eight by eight. So hopefully that's a good decision and not a bad one, but I feel like there wasn't enough here to go into my nine by 13, so. Though I could be wrong on that. I don't know what I'm doing. Let's just leave it at that. I don't know what I'm doing. 
also not quite sure how to get this all out of my pot. Okay, this is already, the, oh my God, okay. So my first thought when I'm pulling this away and looking on camera is it looks like a bunch of dead flies. I'm not sure if it's looking like that on camera for you guys, but at the angle I'm looking at the camera at, looks like a bunch of dead flies. <laughs> Appetizing. He wants to make Rice Krispie treats. Looks like dead flies. So it's already starting to set up. Um, it's just sticking to everything as noted. I think putting it into my eight by eight worked out better than going with the larger pan, but we are just gonna have some very um, thick Rice Krispie treats, which never hurt anybody's feelings. But I'm gonna pop that into the fridge and let it set up. Okay, we've got those in the fridge setting up a little bit better. Um, you don't need to store your Rice Krispie treats in the refrigerator by any means. It just helps them all come together a little bit more quickly. But I am gonna go ahead and do a little taste test for you guys. Good flavor. My Rice Krispie cereal is like extra chewy. I'm hoping it hasn't gone stale. <laughs> Wouldn't that be my luck? These are good. Like extra like chocolatey. I don't think we have this for that long. It's supposed to be good until July 20th. July 20th of 2021. Yeah. It's not stale. So maybe it's just because it's hot. I don't know. I feel like it has a weird texture. Like it has a texture like stale cereal. I don't know. Maybe I did something wrong. Y'all who, I about hit myself in the face with that. Did you see it? Y'all who are experienced with making Rice Krispie treats, let me know. Did I do something wrong? Is it just because it's still warm? It kind of has a weird texture. But it tastes good otherwise. I'll leave the recipe linked down below in the description box. If you guys are curious and want to try making your own um, Oreo Rice Krispie rice crispy treats <laughs> okay guys thanks for hanging out with me and prepping my food and making the oreo rice crispy treats hopefully you guys enjoyed this video us just hanging out i know it wasn't super chatty it was more like informative if anything um but hopefully you still enjoyed it thank you so much for watching if you are new here i hope you take the time to check out my channel see if there's anything else you'd like to watch and maybe subscribe if you've been watching me for a while i want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me and i can't wait to connect with you down in the comments down below so that's going to be it for me today, and I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye. So we like to use this kind of ground hamburger. Can I get you that hamburger? Okay? You behind me. It's hot. Okay, so I just kind of like to go I'm through. I'm not in the middle. And guess how I'm we... in not in the middle. You'll be just fine. Move. No. Yes, move.